And welcome back. Well, I bet most parents experience some feeling of irritation, shame, and embarrassment. Why can't my kid behave? Exactly. Our next guest used her reporting skills to investigate bad behavior and crisscross the country to interview top parenting counselors, rehabilitation specialists, and brain science experts. We are super happy to welcome Katherine Reynolds Lewis to the Yellow Couch. This is her new book. The good news about bad behavior, why kids are less disciplined than ever, and what to do about it. She is here today with what she calls a new model of discipline for a generation of kids who are out of control. Good Great to, to see, see you. you. Thanks for having <laughs> so me. So what is the good news about bad behavior? The good news is that when our kids are acting up, it tells us that there's something needed. It's not that we're failing as parents. It's not that they're going to be living in a van down by the river, you know, because they can't control themselves. It's a sign that we should play detective and try to figure out what's going on, what skill don't they have, what's going on with our routine that needs to be tweaked, and how we can work with them to get them to do what's needed in the situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure as soon as you mention this topic, parents perk up parents, grandparents, everybody who's got children in their life because it's so relatable. But I think one of the things people want to know is you say old tactics don't work. The timeouts, sticker charts, obviously hitting or yelling or things like that never worked. But what, what do you tell people does work if those old things or why they don't work anymore? Right, it's so challenging as parents because our first instinct, we see a kid acting out, we see our child not doing what they're supposed to, and our, we wanna go to that reward or punishment. Yeah. And maybe it worked 30 years ago when I was growing up and kids had a lot more autonomy, they were learning self-control naturally in the way that they grew up. But nowadays, those, um, those kinds of tactics just start a power struggle with our kids. Mm. And they're not doing what's really needed, which is instilling self-discipline. So children today don't have the impulse control, they don't have the emotion regulation, they don't have all these important social emotional skills that kids did previously. In fact, one in two children by the time they're 18 will have a mood or behavioral disorder or a substance addiction. So it's that. like anxiety, right. depression, exactly. or they're addicted to some form of alcohol or drugs. Right, and all of those are ways, different ways of trying to manage their own big feelings or behavior um, because they don't have healthy ways of doing it. It's coping, mm. right? It's a, a coping mechanism rather than a way of figuring out what's, what's wrong. Um, in terms of game-changing strategies, so you, you say that there's a different way to discipline that will work with today's kids. What are those strategies? In my book, um, The Good News About Beh Bad Behavior, I call it the apprenticeship model. And I spent five years studying all the most successful discipline models in the country that were backed by research, that had really good long track records, two in schools and two in homes. And from those, I pulled these three elements that are in every one of them connection between the adult and the child as the foundation for discipline, communication about what's going on, and that involves both the adults and the child's perspective, and then focusing on capability building. So make little by little building the child's ability to do what's needed. And that means starting on whatever small progress you see and building from there and giving them a lot more responsibility for maybe taking a, making a choice and failing, and then learning from that instead of us swooping down and saying, oh, you were bad, you need to do this next time. Mm -hmm. Let them interpret and experience those lessons. Mm -hmm. I think this just immediately, you know, the things that you say about how we had more autonomy, we were more self-regulating, I think those things are going to perk people up and, and you relate to it. It, it. It's so quick to say, yes, that is what happened. It is so different for kids now. Social media is also so different. So, you know, with all this research back discipline model, where does social media come into play and how does that affect our kids and their behavior? It's a huge piece of it and social media is very connected to anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. and narcissism. For adults too. Right, <laughs> and all of us. And actually mm -hmm. that's a big, that's sort of where you might want to start. Yeah. Think about how am I using social media? Am I always checking Instagram or Facebook? And are my kids learning from me that that's a very big part of my life? So sometimes we need to moderate our own behavior to give our kids a model of how is, what's a healthy amount of use of social media. Mm -hmm. So it's impossible to completely monitor and control our kids' social media, even if that were healthy. Mm -hmm. And instead, we need to have this conversation about how are you using it? How are your peers using it? Um, I also would recommend waiting as long as you can 
There's this movement, wait till eighth grade mm -hmm. before giving your child a cell phone. And it's not just for social media, but other kinds of online activity that are really not healthy for kids when they're too young to understand the impact of their, act their actions. Mm -hmm. I think you probably can't overstate um, the role of th their phones, social media, technology, digital distractions yep. with kids today. Um, but what about the increased pressure on academics as well as extracurriculars? I, I find it unbelievable the, the things parents do, especially as it relates to pressure with school and performing at school, but then also with athletics. I mean, kids are going to coach almost like tutors for sports and club teams and traveling great distances for different competitions and it's it's pretty remarkable By i think and it's and it's a huge change yeah right. and and for example the, the the pressure to get a scholarship maybe mm -hmm. even college as a as a as a result of that athletic performance it's a huge piece of what's going on with kids today so when i was growing up i walked myself home from school i made myself a snack i fought with my brother about whether to watch guiding light or gi joe <laughs> and and i did my homework and a lot of that was me managing my time yep resolving conflict, right? Yeah. Having a lot of responsibility for figuring things out myself. And when kids are shuttled from activity to activity, supervised all day long, not only do they not have the ability to make those choices, they get the message, you are worth your accomplishments, mm -hmm. right? It's not your character. It's not what you contribute to the household or how you help our neighbors. It's about these very, very difficult things to achieve. And I would love to see this country return to a focus on what kids' character and their, their own self-worth, what they can contribute to the household. So simply, simple things like doing chores, helping with dinner, those will actually feed our kids' self-esteem and their worth much more than being on that travel soccer team where even if you're the best one on the team, there's always gonna be someone bigger and stronger and better. And if your self-worth is tied up in all those really high level achievements, you don't have a lot to fall back on. Real quick, because we're out of time, I just want, for, for parents who are experiencing a very disruptive or defiant child, is there a quick takeaway of something they can do immediately today to help stop that behavior? Well, the most important takeaway from the book is that we cannot expect our children to develop self-control if we're always controlling them. Mm. So when we step back, we calm our own bodies and our own manner, they will naturally, there's all this subconscious connection, they will also start to calm down. So when we change our response, instead of reacting, if we take a minute to respond, that will change the whole dynamic. And there's so many strategies in the book for how specifically to put that into action. Well, people You're fantastic. Have, yeah, and people have the opportunity to meet you, find out more about your book. Again, the name of the book is The Good News About Bad Behavior, Why Kids Are Less Disciplined Than Ever and What to Do About It. You're at University School of Milwaukee tonight at seven o'clock that school is located on west ferry chasm road in river hills people can go to your website it's katherinrlewis.com for more information sounds like this could work well for some adults i know too yeah <laughs> it works on spouses actually <laughs> that's fantastic thank you Thanks. so much thank you for, for having appreciate me appreciate it